You know what? I've been inundated by this particular story. Actually, a, a host of stories. You know, when she started looking into it, everybody's going to the one on CNN about the imbalance of uh, men and women on campus, even though that imbalance has been there for the last 20 years or so. Uh, women caught up in past men on campus, past the 50-50 mark, back in the 80s. And that's of white men. Black women have always been more educated than black men. That's why I talk about the Monaghan Report so much. It's because he pointed it out. 75% of your valedictorians in high school, going back some 80 years, were female. Always have been female. Had to go back to the Mohawk Conference. They said that black men did not need to be educated. And most black men, for the most part, and Dr. Johnson pointed this out, did not graduate past eighth grade until the Kerner Commission in 1968 when they actually needed to put men in factories and needed to at least give them a high school education. And that's what it really used to be. My parents were sharecroppers and their goal was not to get their kids into college. Their goal was to get kids out of high school because most of them never did. My mother didn't graduate high school. Neither did my father. So they thought it was an accomplishment just to get all their children with a high school diploma. College was not in their purview. Now with my kids, the minimum, the minimum was a high school diploma. All of my kids went to college and at least did uh, one year at a four-year college. All of them. That was the goal. I have one child that has a bachelor's and one child that's on the way. And the one child that decided that it wasn't worth his time was my son. But that's the backdrop. But I wanted, I should give a more detailed video, and I may do that later, but this is a goddamn rant. So if you don't like profanity, then you should cut this stuff off right now. Because I'm mighty sick of this. I'm sick of this shit. Okay? I actually did uh, three videos. I think it was four. Called Feminized America. Feminized America is not an effect. Okay? It's not a cause. It's an effect. It's, a, it's an intentional effect by this country to not only feminize females, but also males on purpose. It's not an accident. It's on purpose. That's how come they gave the feminists the uh, school system. They knew what they were doing. They encouraged it. They tilted the playing field on purpose. And they put this whole system, this whole country in the hands of post-structuralist feminists that think nature doesn't count first thing that's where the nurture over nature comes from and they believe that uh, who you are and how you act is not due to your biology it's performative as they call it in other words it's how you're taught to act and if you just change the instructions that you give the machine it's one thing Scott Galloway did say that he's now coming to uh, uh, know this because it's obvious that men and women are different fundamentally different physically they have different missions. So they thought, which was incorrect because they tried it before. I always point back to the Atlantic in 19, I think it was 19, 1912, a series of Atlantic articles about uh, feminizing white men, white boys in high school and giving them a curriculum that's not suited to them because they're boys. And now you're going to feminize the boys. They said that uh, in 1912, you read, that's why I always go back to the boy problem. I might have to go through the whole book because it's one of those things that's probably necessary at this point. Because I'm getting tired of the anti-intellectual bent that America has, especially the people that so-called are intellectuals and so-called are knowers and are thinkers. You can't go past 90 days, okay? White people are getting bad. Black people have always gotten bad because guess who the culprit always is? It's never about the female. What the woman wants is always foremost. I was listening to my, what tripped this off, and I'll give him a shout out, is uh, Anton. And it's Anton Daniels in his after show, right? And it's talking about what women want. Women don't want a guy making $40,000. Guess what, Anton? 42% of people, 42% of people in America, not black, 42% of all people in America make 18, less than $18,000 a year. The median earnings, which is 50-50 of a white man, of all people, but a white man is $33,000 a year. Median earnings. The median earning of a black man is 26. 
So if you don't want a forty thousand dollar guy, year guy, or a fifty thousand dollar year guy, you're throwing away seventy percent of the men, and that is a fucking structural problem of the United States. Nobody on purpose, for the vast majority of people on purpose, do not earn do not earn as much as they can. That is a fucking structural problem of the United States. Now that's out of the way. It's not men's goddamn problems about women's mating strategy. Fuck it. Make prostitution legal and be done with it. Because that's all it's fucking about is pussy. If America doesn't care about a two-parent household, why should men give a fuck about a two-parent household if, if America does it? If the whole, if the society does it? Society does not encourage a two-parent household. It doesn't. And it hasn't for the last 60 years. Especially in the black community. Now, I'm getting freaking tired of you trying to lay this shit on the, on the backs and at the feet of black men. Even today, when only 10% of your fucking boys can read. Are you fucking kidding me? That means you don't give a shit. You don't give a shit about boys. And really, the only reason people are bringing this shit up is because now it's laid at the feet of white men. White men are getting their Negro wake-up call. Now it's a full stop. Your feminists talked about this damn near 10 years ago. Go back and read the, the End of Men. I did. Go back and read The Richer Sex. I did. The feminists talked about this. They were cheering because they finally reached equity in 2012, especially after the downturn when men, they cheered men losing their freaking jobs because they gained a certain amount of power. But as long as it was equal and women weren't suffering, it was all good. And when white women weren't suffering, it was all good. Now white women have to face the same thing that black women have to face. White women wanted what black women have, which is a gynocracy. Now they're getting ready to get it and they don't like it. They want it, but they don't like it. Same reason black women want it, but they don't like it. If you want to turn the stuff on his head, which is something Moynihan said years ago. Moynihan said this back in 1965. He need to give resources to the men because the men need to take care of their families and the men need to be heads of household because to him, that was the natural order of things. And to him, that's the reason the black community had a dysfunction is because the men weren't in their proper place, according to this society. According to the rest of the world, basically, because women naturally want what? Men to be head of household. White women naturally want men to be ahead of them. But the thing is, if you come up with this post-structuralist feminist training, this nurture over nature, and you want everything, we want equity, which is not equality, which is equity. Equi equality is equal accessibility, a level playing field. That's equality. And maybe the best person in each category wins. That's equality, equality of opportunity. In fact, that was, that's what was coming out of the uh, Kerner Commission. The original term was equal opportunity. The, the EEOC, which was what, what it was in vogue when I first started to go to college, it was just changing it over after the Bakke decision. Equal opportunity, EOC. They changed it to affirmative action because they didn't want black men to have a, a level playing field. They wanted to tilt the playing field toward not only white men, but also white women. Guess who took the majority of those positions that were supposed to be for your men? It's white women. And now white women want to keep it. And then what did they do? They wanted to burn the ladder so that not only black men, but also black women couldn't climb it. But they got drunk with power, just like black women did. They, they got used to wheeling a rolling pin. They got used to the playing field being tilted in their favor. And after 50 years of it being tilted in their favor, guess what you got to get on the other side? You got what you got. That's why CNBC was showing what the tilt was before the 1970s and after the 1970s. What does that tell you? It's not a natural occurrence. It's called feminism. It's called feminist policies backed by not just the women, by your government. This is intentional. Why? Because you thought it was going to work. Because you believe in nurture over nature. You thought that women were going to be happy with this. Guess what? They weren't, which is something that Liz Mundy said back in 2012, that women were not going to be happy with the way things are. And they're not. They don't want to be breadwinners. They don't want to lead their families. They don't want leadership positions. They want to nest in what men build. And what happens when men don't build it? Nothing. That's how come you got why the last man. They're showing uh, uh, feminist women what it's like when you're in charge. And that world is chaos. This society is not built for women to be in charge. Women need to have a structure. Who builds the structure? It's not women. America is getting what it deserves. I don't feel sorry for it. 
I don't feel sorry for the women. It's a mating crisis. Oh, but now we're going to put it on the men. Okay, if you don't do something about it, the men are going to get pissed off and they're going to uh, have a revolution. They talk about in history. Men get pissed off because they're alone and they're broke and they, they'll they have a revolution. If that was the case, Japan would have had one. It's called the Lotus Eaters. If that was the case, China would have be having one right now. They call it men, young men laying flat. The same phenomenon has already been going on. It's, the MGTOWs, whether you like them or not, MGTOWs have said that for years. MGTOWs have been trumpeting this, this, this cry for years. Idmores have been saying this for years. Black men have been saying this since the 70s. Eventually, it was going to happen. Took a couple generations for men to catch up. Now what men are seeing, they don't see a value in participating in this society the way that you want them to participate. They don't see the value in a two-parent household. They don't see value in having uh, a family. That's like a 54% of your men don't have kids. 54% of your black men don't have kids and are not going to get married. They don't see value in a, a monogamous framework. They don't. It's only increasing. If you if you poll the millennials, if you poll the Z's, it's going to be 75 percent. If you truly believe in this structure of a, of a family unit, the United States and Western countries are not doing anything to actually enhance it. That's how come that stuff is spreading down Latin America like wildfire. It's also spreading to Africa. This is going to be a global phenomenon. And your so-called experts on YouTube, your talking heads. Let me get this clear to all the other two, two I'm not going to call any names but you know who you are you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and that's the goddamn problem you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and the people that do know are not saying anything there's a reason they stopped the, the mouse utopia experiments because it was too accurate me and uh, the nameless protagonist did about a whole series of videos on this talking about this what we call the, uh, the demographic shift in the uh, I think it's the cult behavioral cliff where you, dec you decline and your the society starts to die off. And that would be fine if it was just limited to the United States. The thing is, you now you have a global civilization and it's all happening at the same time. And instead of countering what you saw coming, you actually enhance it. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe the Malthusians have gotten control of this society, of this civilization. They're actually pushing policies to have a natural decline, possibly. Because if that, is, if that is the case, it's working. Now, normally I would put up charts and pictures. stuff like, I'm not doing it as, that today because this is a rant. If you're asking me for links today, the, the, go suck on a lemon and go hit YouTube, Google and do some research. Because I'm not putting links in here today. This is an emotional rant. Even though there's logic to it, it's an emotional rant. So if you're asking me for a logical, detailed, academic, linked discussion... Forget about it. So don't even put it in the comment section because you're not going to get it. Go do your homework. Stop being lazy. Get tired of people asking me for links. The last video, I, I, uh, a couple of videos I did, I talked about the report of the Natural Institute of Health. Talked about the black men and black women having uh, a disparate number of children between them. Even though a couple of months before I put, I actually did a whole video explaining it. And these are my followers. They're asking me for information. Go look. But anyway, this is a natural consequence. This is a natural consequence. Now, white women that can't find mates because we want we want a man with a college degree. And if you don't have a college degree, we can't get together. Well, then go go be a concubine to the four guys. Because I heard Scott talking about the four guys on the mating app. They're attracted to four guys. Well, go be their concubine. Ro you know, if there's if there's 50 women after after four guys, then b get in the rotation and shut up. Everybody's, well, oh, oh, you know, what they call concern trolling men. Oh, if we don't do anything about it and there's a mating crisis, then men are going to get pissed off and they're going to tear up society. So what? Let them tear it up. Shit don't work. You're not willing to change it. Let them tear it up. If women don't have mates, so what? I don't give a shit whether they have mates or not. That's not men's problem where women have mates. They built the system. They tilted the system. They pushed for the system to be tilted. Suck it up, cupcake, and read it and weep. Stand on your square. You want independence? You, you want an unfair advantage? You got it. Now read it and weep. Either take care of the guy, get a poor guy, get a supportive guy, and take care of him, and shut the fuck up and sit down. Like Kevin says, get a dog and die. 50 years, 
uh, two and a half generations, you did nothing. You did nothing to develop these men. Nothing. In fact, you did the opposite. You did everything to retard these men. And now, two and a half generations later, you're crying because you have a 60-40 split. What would you expect? Men aren't applying because they don't see value. Look, everybody's looking at this one article, like the Atlantic and CNN. They don't look at the Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal, at least, you know, that's one thing my advisor told me a long time ago, back in the 90s, right? The reason you read the Wall Street Journal is because Wall Street Journal has the duty to tell the truth. Why? Because if they lie, people are not going to make money. People are going to lose money if they have wrong information. They have to at least balance it with some truth. Wall Street Journal told you why men do not want to participate in college. They told you because men don't see a value in participating in this system. They don't see a value is running through uh, this gauntlet for what? For debt? For the approval of some chick? You're trying to convince guys they should run this gauntlet, jump over these hoops before some pussy. Really? And then you get mad when the guy said they're not going to do it. If every man in America wants to be a fucking bum, let him be a fucking bum and let the system fall. If you're not gonna make it fair, you're not gonna make it level, let the goddamn thing fall. You know, I'm an old man, and I'm, I'm the first one that's gonna get hit and get hurt. But at some point, you gotta be ready to let, let pull, you know, be like uh, Samson. Get in the middle of the pillars, and basically, okay, the shit's not working, shit's not fair, let's go ahead and pull the pillars. And I'm willing to take the hit. I'm willing for the building to collapse on my head at this point. Let it fall. That's what I said about the black community. And I'm going to be frank in this one. They may have to pull this one down. If, if they pull this down, this is probably going to be up on, uh, on Patreon. If they pull it down. Because they may pull it down. I'm sure it's going to get flagged. But if it gets flagged, it's going to be on Patreon. That's what I said about the black community. If black women are not fucking willing to invest in their men and invest in making this goddamn thing equitable and doing the best for everybody, especially if they have a leadership position. Let the goddamn thing fall. Let it fall on its own way. It deserves to fall on its own way. Either you support it, you put up beams to support the goddamn thing just like any other building. If you want to take out the support support structures in any building, building's going to fall. Let it fall. If America uh, does not want to support its men, it wants to tilt the balance and the floor against productive men, it's going to fall if it hasn't already because men are going to check out. Men are basically, this is what they're afraid of. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't against uh, the red pill men because they're inaccurate. They weren't against red pill men because they, because they thought red pill men hated women. They were against this stuff catching on and this stuff catching on and, and men waking up and realize that the goddamn game is rigged. It's one thing about men and, and, and logical men especially, they believe in a fair game. They don't care. Okay, if the men count winners and losers. If the game is fair, men will accept the loss. If a dude is a one, he knows he's a one, and he knows that he can't get a date, he'll sit on his hands, he'll accept that loss. Women do not. Women want a cookie. But if the game is fair, that's all men want. If the game is fair, men will accept that loss. And for, for 60 years, men accepted that the tilt and playing an unfair rigged game for 50 years. But that day is over. That's what the red pill community is about. And basically the red pill has gone mainstream, whether you like it or not. Red pill has gone mainstream and men, all men, white, black, and whatever, do not want to deal in a rigged game. College and education is a rigged game and everybody knows it. But everybody uh, pushes past it, they overlook it. Well, you ain't gonna get no pussy if you don't have a college degree. If you ain't gonna get no pussy, you don't earn for over $40,000 a year. Well, you ain't gonna... The world is a zero-sum game. It's a zero-sum game on purpose. Capitalism is a rigged game so that you have winners and losers. The, for, for capitalists to succeed, the majority of people have to be losers. They have to be within that system. For America to exist, oh, there's a whole lot of countries that have to lose. It is what it is. The thing is, we need to be open, honest, and frank about what it is that we do in a system that we live in. For there to be $100,000 a guy, there gotta be a whole lot of people making less than 30. Gotta be. That's why people making $100,000 over are less than 10% because there has to be 90% of the people that make less than that. If there wasn't, then they then there would, there would have to be a balance. Then everybody would make 50, which is against capitalism, which people don't agree with. It's not a balanced system. It's a rigged system on purpose. 
70 percent of your people who make less than fifty thousand dollars a year that's on per that's by design now, i don't care if you listen to prosperity pimps and i got no problem against prosperity gospel people right prosperity uh, uh business people because there are people that can take advantage of prosperity but thing is is that at the end of the day the system is not designed for everybody to make a hundred thousand dollars a year it's not never will be hasn't been in human history and the reason that you can kind of do it a little bit now is because you have a wide, you have a global market. What happens when that market catches up as it's doing now? What happens when 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 the uh, United States goes off the dollar, or not the United, but the world goes off the United States dollar? What's going to happen then? Oops! But I got a whole lot of people sending me this shit, man. Sending me this stuff about men not attending college, and it's going to be a mating crisis. Fuck a mating crisis. I'm like, Kevin, get a dog and die. Leave us alone. You not having a man is not our problem. Choose from the men that are there or go get a dog and die. Men don't sit at a restaurant. Men are not killing themselves so that, that you will pick them. If you don't, you don't. For the vast majority of history, men, if you didn't get a woman, you didn't get a woman. Men learn how to arrange themselves. A pissed off men that can't get a mate or that are lonely, do they overturn societies? No, societies learn how to balance the playing field. What do you think the prostitution's for? I think that's for legal woman sharing. Thing is, you don't get the burden of, of monogamy, which is taking care of children, which you don't need anyway, which is why marriage in the first place is going away, which is why the state is, the, the state is, is uh, taking up the slack for child support. What do you think the $300 a month in uh, earned income credit per child or per household, I think it's per child or per household. I think it might be per child. Where do you think that's coming from? From the state. That's, that's state-sponsored child support, paid for by big daddy government because the children belong to the state, which is something I said for a long time. Oops, did I say that out loud? What I'm saying to, the, to all these prosperity folks, and I'm saying it nicely, all these hotel folks, and I'm saying it nicely, get off of black men's necks. Get off their necks. Now, let's change the system to where it's fucking fair, to where they ha don't have to go through a goddamn minefield to get a basic education. Give them a forum or give them a process to where they can succeed. But leave them the fuck alone. Men can't even date on campus anyway because of all this Me Too shit. You can't even approach a woman on the street because there's Me Too shit. You're killing mating. So now the women are going to have to take the reins and take take the positions that they ask for because they ask for them and take control of the situation because you ask to turn this whole society into a gynocracy either lead or shut up what's the old uh, saying i think it was a general and i think uh, lee i coca with with chrysler said it years ago lead follow or get the fuck out of the way and i say that to black women i say to all to all the people that are, are actually espousing for this blue pill shit Liz Mundy said the same thing. She said in a nice way to white to, to these feminist white women that, that have these power positions and they needed to find a mate that was supportive. That you had to be uh, learn how to be a provider. You had to act like a provider. You had to find and, and actually exhibit leadership because that's what you're trained for. If you don't want to do it, get out of the game. Liz Mundy said it in a nice way. Lead, follow, or get the fuck out of the way. That's all I got, because like I said, sometimes if I keep going, I'll get riled up again. It'll go on another 30 minutes. I think this is long enough because I got to edit this stuff. I know you want me to rant for an hour, but I got to edit this stuff. We'll see if this stays up. If it doesn't, it'll be up on Patreon if they take it down, because I know there's a lot of expletives, but not getting monetized anyway. So what the hell? I'm not making money from this shit. Anyway, it's 